Hello and welcome back to the Northwest Fusion Group video channel. I'm Ian G0VGS. In part one, we downloaded and installed the SCU20 driver and the WiseX software. Today, we're going to connect the radio and explore WiseX in a little more detail. When you get the confirmation email from Yesu, it includes two numbers your node ID and your room ID. You need to add both of these into the WiseX software, but it should be noted that unless you have an HRI 200, you can't run a room on WiseX. So on with the video. So the first thing we need to do is to put the radio into the correct mode in order to use it with WiseX. And I'm going to cover using portable HRI mode. So I've connected the SCU20 to the back of the uh, FTM400 and uh, plugged it into my Windows computer. And I don't have WiseX running at the moment. So I'm going to put it into the mode. Now, you know the old story about uh, never pressing the red button. Well, in this case, we're going to press two of them. First of all, we need to turn the radio off. And now we need to hold the DX button, the GM button, and the power button all together. You can hear that the startup tone is different. It's five tones instead of three, and you can see Y is X on the screen. So now the radio is in the correct mode. We need to start Y is X. Having put the radio into portable HRI mode, the next thing we need to do is to start Wise X. So let's do that now. And the first time you start it, you'll be asked for some information. It obviously needs to know where the serial port is so that it can talk to your radio. Use the drop down on the right hand side here and select the COM port that your radio is on. If you don't see uh, that COM port, you've got a refresh button and also you've got device manager that you can bring up to find the relevant COM port. Once you're happy with that, click OK and WiseX will start. Once it starts, you can see here uh, that we've got an activation screen and on the left here is the serial number of our radio. Now that's been read from the radio. So we've got a node ID and a room ID to enter and those were the ones that were sent to you in the activation email. In my case, that's 77579 and the room ID is 87579. Now, even though I'm using portable HRI mode and therefore I don't have the capability of running a room, I still need to enter that room ID. Once you've done that, click ID entry and everything will be filled in for you. So just click OK. And we're now running YSX. You can see at the top here that you've got your serial number, your node ID, your call sign and your user ID. Now you can change that user ID, but generally it's fine to leave it as it is. Pretty much that's all you need to do for portable HRI mode. So in a moment, you'll see the nodes and rooms start to fill up within the WiseX software. It can take a little while for this to happen. You don't have to wait for everything to populate. You can connect to the room of your choice as long as you know the room ID. If you go to connect and connect to, then you get a box to enable you to enter a number. And I'm going to uh, join the Northwest Fusion Group room, which is 41755. 41755 and click OK. And there you are. You can see that we've got an info box here and we've also got a list of the nodes that are connected to 41755. You can also see one in green here and that is one that is actually in use. So that's it. We're up and running. We're connected to Northwest Fusion Group. 
I mentioned in part one that it was possible to have WiseX starting automatically. When Windows starts, you may or may not want that. But either way, it's good to know how to achieve that. And the way to do it is to come down to the system tray at the right hand side of the bottom bar of Windows and click on the little arrow. And you'll see here various icons, one of which is the YSX icon. If you right click that, you'll see that you've got the option to auto start or not. If auto start is enabled, then that will be ticked like so. If you don't want auto start, just click the same thing again. And now when you go to look at it, you'll see that auto start is not on. Once WiseX has been started, your screen should look something like this. Right in the middle, you can see WiseX node. And above that, in big friendly letters, you should see the word direct, with nothing showing on VFOB. This is true portable HRI mode. Only one radio is required, and you use the microphone on that radio to talk through wires X. It is possible that the radio comes up in a slightly different mode, called access mode. And you can switch between the two, direct mode and access mode, by momentarily pressing the VFOB dial. So if you see this on the screen, you're in access mode. And I'll explain the difference between the two. Let's just go back to direct mode for the moment. In direct mode, your radio is purely acting as an interface to the computer. No RF is generated. It's still always wise, of course, to have a dummy load on the antenna socket. But in direct mode, no RF is generated. If I pick up the microphone and press the PTT, you can see that the transmit icon comes up on the screen. If, however, I'm in access mode, and we see a frequency on the screen, if I press the PTT now, you see I get error, TX error. In access mode, you can't use the microphone on the radio connected to the computer. You have to use another radio to access it. In this mode, RF is generated and pushed out of the antenna socket. And in fact, that's the way gateways work. Now here in the UK, if you were to connect an aerial to that, then you would need a notice of variation on your license. One benefit of access mode is that you can put a dummy load on the radio that's connected to the computer, and then you can use a handheld, for example, around the house or maybe in the garden to access wires X. However, you can't use the radio that's connected to the computer to access wires X directly. You will always have to use a second radio. It is, of course, possible to come back in the shack press the button and go back to direct mode. And then you can use the microphone that came with the radio to access wires X. The best of both worlds. One thing to notice about access mode is that you see the frequency on the screen, in this case, 144 megahertz. Now this frequency isn't controlled by the radio. If I go to the VFO knob and turn it, you'll see that what actually happens is it acts as a dimmer. The frequency is being controlled by wires X, and we'll look at that now. When your radio is in portable HRI access mode, I mentioned before that you change the frequency within wires X. And to do that, you go to the file menu and choose transceiver, and this box will appear. These are the settings for your radio when it's in access mode. You can change this frequency to whatever you like. There are recommended frequencies for hotspots in the UK. You might like to choose one of those. It can be on two meters or 70 centimeters. So let's just change this, for example, to 145.350. You want to choose narrow deviation. 
and you can also set a digital ID to further restrict who can use your station. As I said, for a UK station, a dummy load is recommended because as soon as you put an aerial on the back of your radio, you need a notice of variation because there is a possibility that somebody else will be able to use your station other than yourself. You can also set the power output, low, mid or high. That would be set to low in most circumstances. And that's it. That's all you need to do. Set that up, click OK. When you bring the radio up in access mode, the details you set in the transceiver options will come up on the radio, the frequency, the power level, and any digital ID that you have set. Well, I hope you found the video useful. Until the next time, cheerio. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click the like button and do consider subscribing to the channel. If you click the bell icon, YouTube will notify you every time I release a new video.